is a podcast. How much money does it make? I mean, come on. We're making a ton of cash. Look, you make a phenomenal ste steak, but everything else is a disaster. Every other decision. What about the thing we did with the podcast, though, with the horns? Come on. I think people like the horns. Nobody's going to like the horns. You think people are going to be walking around with horns on because we, we wore them once on a podcast? They're not. The funny part was I was talking about the actual horns, like the honking of the horn. And so that means you don't even like the actual part where we wear horns. No, I didn't like that either. I just went along with it. Maybe because you have never liked the horn. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Your mother horn. cheated with a guy who played horn in a band. That's probably why you don't like horns. That's true. But she fucked the trumpet player too, so. How do you like the asparagus though? It's amazing. Welcome to another episode of $20 Chef. I got another special guest, my man Jim Florentine. Thanks for coming on the show. What's going on, man? Uh, obviously, I've been a big fan of your work for a long time. Uh, you know, Crank, your stand-up's hilarious. Um, you know, uh, obviously, your prank call albums before Crank Yankers and then Crank Yankers. And that was so good, they brought it back. Out of, out of the blue, there wasn't even rumors that it was coming back. So my friend told me. He's like, dude, congratulations. I go, on what? He goes, what? He goes, Crank Anchors is back. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah. And he pulled up like Hollywood Reporter. Look, right here. I'm like, holy shit. Obviously, it's, it's on tonight, 10.30, 9.30 Central. Uh, I, play, I mean, you're a busy guy. You're a family guy. You got you got working with Crank Anchors right now. You're also on tour, Creeps with Kids, which I love the uh, title. Just hanging out, doing stand-up with your buddies. Sounds yeah, like it's fucking great, man, to work with your friends after all these years. Because you, you know, as a comic, you go into clubs, a lot of times you don't even know the opening guys, yeah. the local guys, you don't even, mm -hmm. you can't hang out with anybody, you're stuck in a hotel room for three straight days just jerking off. Yeah. And it gets, you know, it gets tiring after a while. <laughs> you know. Finally gotta go fucking see if the Chinese place is in walking distance. They always think I'm a cop. Yeah, I come a, in. You I'm got a, an undercover vibe, man. Yeah, I'm a white Irish guy to come in like, you You a cop? I go, no, I'm not a cop. I'm just trying to get jerked off here. It's a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm really not. Even if I was, so what? I'm, I wouldn't say anything. All right, well listen, you know, you, uh, you're on everything. You have movies, TV, stand-up, you're listening to these streets, and, um, um, I like, I always have, there's always something about a scene with a guy in a movie where he's just eating a steak and talking. You know, it's like, it's always just a more powerful, something to do, I don't know what it is. So I thought we would just maybe try it today. So I got a couple of fat ass rib, boneless ribeyes here. And then we're just gonna do a little bit of, we're gonna roast some potatoes with some asparagus, a little thyme, a little rosemary, and that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, man. Uh, you cook um, a lot at home? No, not really. Um, All right, well, let me you get know, you. know, I had this one company I would deliver food and they even separate it, you know, so you just oh, have really? to put it together. I'm like, 40 minutes, fuck this, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> but I started though, because I got a grill. I'm, I got a grill on my deck. Okay. You know, I was married for a while and I don't know, and she would just cook, so I'm like, perfect. And then when I throw her out, I'm like, fuck, I'm hungry now. <laughs> now what do I do? Well, here's what we're gonna do. First, I always like to uh, get the pan going with a little bit of uh, onion and garlic. A little shallot in here, not much. Just to get a little more flavor in my skillet, you know? So let's see your, your cutting skills over there. My, they're not great. I'm always nervous I'm gonna cut my hand. Yeah. You know, cut a finger off. So you always, I always keep the, like, does this part on the wood? So when you come under there, it never moves. I mean, you got five fingers, so I'll listen to you. Yeah. You know, you always you always look at that to see if the guy's missing, you know, <laughs> missing a thumb. Like, I'm not gonna take his, uh, his suggestion <laughs> over it. All right, that'll work. I'm gonna take your garlic over here. We'll put it all in the pile, just for now, because we're gonna cut up some of those potatoes and there's asparagus. I already washed it. Cut these at angles, you know? Why in angles? What's the theory? I don't know, it just that? looks cooler. All right, I'll buy it. So did you always know, like, even when you were younger, you would cook around the house? No. I didn't, you never I didn't, did. No, I didn't cook shit really until I made like an egg sandwiches here and there. I had no, you know, I grew up in a family of seven. My mom cooked every night, so I never cooked. I remember the first time I was on my own, I wanted to cook a hamburger. I had some chopped meat in the refrigerator. I cooked it in a pot. <laughs> and I was figuring, about I'm right. trying to figure out why, like I couldn't get the spatula in there. I'm like, why is this so difficult? Like how did my mom do this cook for seven? I actually was on the road a lot. And then I, had, I was a roommate with another comedian, Martin Moreno. They cooked a lot. And then we just started cooking because we didn't want to go out and do shit after we got home. And then I just really started liking it a lot. And then I started having dates and I had no money to go out. So we're like, oh, well, let's, you guys, do you mind if I make dinner for you at my house? When you could cook a, a home-cooked meal for a girl, that's her what, panties that's get wet. I have a girl that actually loves me now. All right, so I'm just gonna hit these potatoes with some salt and pepper and olive oil. They look good and coated. All right, so I'm just gonna sprinkle these out and then we'll throw some of this thyme. You can grab the rosemary over there. I feel like this is, you got this from a Christmas tree. Trying to cut corners. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> it, it definitely could be. Right, yeah. All right, so we're going to put this in for 20 minutes at 425, and then we'll add the asparagus at that point. So now you don't season the steaks at all, besides just a little salt and pepper, and that's No, it. you can. I mean, it depends on what you like. So always salt and pepper. I've worked at a couple of restaurants that were pretty decent, and the people were there packed to eat the food there every day, and no one, there was no secret. It was olive oil, salt, and pepper. Uh, I do like this stuff. This is really good. 
no free ads, but right, this, this, you know, the little that grill. Stuff, yeah. Do you cut them in half to get them? No, you never want to touch. Don't ever. No, bust you don't want them, right? Because you want all the juices to stay yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. Because we didn't. The main thing is that the importance is the sear. We got to get a good clean sear on each side. Yeah, that was a rookie mistake I used to always make when I was cooking a hamburger. I always oh, yeah. figured I always press down on it to just get it to cook quicker. Yeah, it's and a then I realized you, all up. the juices are flying in and it's going to be completely dry. So tell me how awesome is was obviously you're a metal kid growing up. Yeah. Then you end up with a metal show. Yeah. Yeah, a show on a VH1 classic called That Metal Show. It was basically like the Tonight Show for ACDC fans, for like hard rock fans. Yeah. And you still actually you still have a show on Ozzy's Boneyard channel on Sirius, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do a radio. Yeah, a, a how hard fun rock. is that? that That's great like, too. Is that the most fun? Yeah, because I do a two hour show and I get to pick the songs I want to play. You know what I mean? Not I don't play all, any of the hits. So I just play like deep tracks off stuff and I do like a two hour show and I just talk in between yeah, the songs. Yeah, in between, you just introduce the songs, talk, introduce, about, talk yeah. about the song. And you know what's great about them? They said, listen, but you can plug whatever you want on the show. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Oh, so Plus, you got more metal heads coming out. Those are the people right there. Oh, yeah. I always people. know like the guys that know that metal show because they'll they'll come to the comedy club and there's like four guys in Iron Maiden shirts. Yeah. And they, sit, <laughs> they sit right in the front. That sounds awesome. Yeah, and then they just want me to talk about metal the whole time my act. Yeah. And meanwhile, the rest <laughs> of the club doesn't know anything about Iron Maiden. They're like, come on, what are you going to talk about Maiden? I go, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I can't appeal to you four people. It's funny that and they is. always come by themselves. Like metalheads are loners. Because if you're into that music, it's not it's not that appealing. I knew that in high school. Like I was a metalhead and I used to go to the parties. I'm like, oh, you know, Metallica might, is fighting. And some girl goes, get the fuck away from me, you weirdo. <laughs> All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. So I'm just going to, you know, make sure they're not sticking and shit. We got some good color here. You know, shits love color. I'm a pale white guy. I know. So <laughs> they like color. Uh, in the next five minutes, when we pull our potatoes out, we're gonna drop this in there with the potatoes, put them back in there, and let it all cook together. Wait, that cooks with the potatoes? Yeah. All right, we'll go ahead and get this fired up. I mean, how do you usually order your meat? A uh, medium, medium well. We can't go higher than medium in my house. It's against right. my lease. So if we go any higher than a medium on a steak here, they kick me out. All right, just a little bit of garlic, a little bit of shallots. I'll make some butter also. I gotta put some butter in that pan. Butter steak's best friend. A little of this rosemary too, and then a little more of this, more of this thyme. And there we go. Now, how much difference in a, in a taste can you get from a steak cooking it on a grill into a frying pan? Is it that yeah. big of a difference? I, I would say so because you get that open flame, right. you know, from the charcoal or whatever, depending on what you're using. If it's wood chips or charcoal, but you know, obviously with a nice iron skillet, all these flavors, you know, it's gonna it's gonna work together nicely. So we're not gonna touch these for a while. We want to get a good nice sear on these buddies. How many times do you recommend flipping a steak like that? Once. Like, just once. Yeah. You don't want to play with it too much. You want it to uh, do its thing, like let, let the process happen. Right. It's good to know. I'm going to pull these potatoes out and add the asparagus. So you got about five more minutes of this cooking. I'd say 10. 10. So the asparagus is going to cook for 10 instead of yeah. the usual 20. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Throw some Parmesan cheese on that shit. Here we go. Back in. All right, so obviously you're excited about Crank Yankers. Uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, you were on the radio. We were on the radio together, and you were telling us about a time you got yourself into some shit. You had to go to court. Well, yeah, and it wasn't even a prank call out. It was an incoming call where a telemarketer was calling. I, I, I basically would sit at home and wait for telemarketers to call and mess with them. <laughs> so this woman called for a sign or something, whatever, and she had my address right in front of me, my all my information. My friend was over, my girlfriend at the time. Let's pretend in the background my friends give my girlfriend a home abortion. <laughs> I had a vacuum running and everything. <laughs> so the woman calls and all of a sudden you hear, she hears screaming in the background. She hears a vacuum. She says, what's going on? I go, oh, my, my friend's just over. He's giving my girlfriend a home abortion. I go, it's no big deal. She's like, what? I go, yeah, yeah. I go, I'm just trying to save a few bucks. He said he, knows what, <laughs> said he knows what he's doing. So just keep going. She's like, keep going? I'm like, yeah, just don't worry about it. So she's trying to pitch whatever she's pitching. He hears screaming, ow, 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 vacuum, all that stuff. She was so horrified, she hangs up the phone up. We start laughing. Yeah, so she called the cops in my town, the local cops in my town, and said, I guess, and, and the cops came to my house. Like, three cop cars and an ambulance and EMS <laughs> workers showed up. And I went out to go get coffee after that, so I, le I left that. There was nobody in the house. So I come back 20 minutes later, whatever, my door is busted in. Holy and all my neighbors shit. are out front. I'm like, what happened here? They go, oh, the cops are here. They were looking for you. Oh, my God. So I just said, you know what? I'll go down to the police station. It's right down the street and just tell them, hey, man, it was just a joke. So I went in there, and the cops were like, what's wrong with I go, yeah, look, it was just a joke. You know, I was doing a prank call. They're like, you thought that was funny? And they go, that woman was so horrified, she left work today early. I go, well, look at the bright side. I gave her a half day of work. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to be funny. <laughs> and, what the and they go, just fill this um, 
police report out. Just say you were sorry what you did. I filled it out. Next thing I know, I got to go to court. I got a disorderly conduct and I'm facing six months in jail. Oh my God. And I'm in the courtroom and I was like the first case that was packed. And I was on, on crank anchors at the time. Like you did a call where you pretended you were giving your girlfriend a home <laughs> abortion. And you think that's funny? And you're on Comedy Central. Is this what passes off as comedy? And I'm sitting there biting my lip. I'm like, yeah, I, don't, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, and meanwhile, I wanted to laugh at his face. I'm like, yeah, it's hilarious. So I got they, you know, like a thousand dollar fine and oh, probation or whatever. God. But I remember walking through the, the courtroom, out of the courtroom, and I was like the first one that was packed, and people were just like hissing at me and booing. <laughs> you know, I was just gonna go, look, I'm not OJ. I didn't pull an OJ. <laughs> See, also here's what I do, I do little finger tests. So that's I did, like the, well I did done. the finger test last night. <laughs> <laughs> so the softer is gonna be the easy, the, the less it's cooked. Okay. Well done is gonna be like that, like on your own hand, right? Right. So, so we're probably still medium rare here right now. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in the oven for five minutes. So you put that, put the steaks in there couple for about minutes. like a couple then minutes. Then I think we should be good. In the meantime, this, this little potato, asparagus, rosemary situation right into our plate. We've roasted our steaks a little bit. Let's pull these out. Hopefully we have a nice little medium uh, medium rare here. And that's it. That's all you need. A little bit of vegetable and potato, boneless ribeye. You're at home, you do that. No, you're not done yet. Just that's it. You know, give us some more color, some fresh green color. You don't want to be threatened by a guy eating a steak because it no. seems even more like this guy could just be eating you alive right now. It's almost symbolism. Right, yeah, yeah. So you saw a guy in an airport, you stared at him for an hour, and you thought he'd be a good guy to get in the horn business with. Exactly. See, the thing is, you don't get it about the horns is that you don't have a lazy eye. I'm looking at you with my good eye, but this eye's at the camera, so they don't know. You don't understand that. You have two nice eyes. No, I don't understand that because I don't have a lazy eye, but I do understand that nobody's going to be interested in the horns. So what did he say when you came up to him and said, hey man, would you be interested in this project? Well, I asked him what that was in that, what was in his case. He said a horn, and then it went from there. What if there was a trumpet in that bag? I wouldn't have brought him around because your mom cheated with a, horn, with a trumpet player. I don't want those cheeks around you. Throw you off. She cheated with the horn guy too. Oh wow, your mom was partying. All you need to know is every Wednesday, Comedy Central, Crank Angers, my man Jim Florentine will be there. That's this episode of $20 Chef. See you guys next time.